Hey folks, welcome to my channel. My name is Robert and I'm a leather worker. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make uh, that quiver you just saw. I'm starting out by cutting uh, a straight edge along this piece of leather and then I'm going to use a strap cutter to cut a uh, narrow strap and then a wider strap. The narrow strap will be uh, to go around the archer's leg um, and that the larger strap will uh, that forms the loop that goes around the belt. So here I'm taking another piece of leather that I've cut that same shape, uh, which was a failed project, uh, and tracing that out. You can see here I'm uh, stropping my X-Acto knife a little bit, which gives it, uh, just puts a little bit of polish on the blade, and makes it cut the leather quite a bit easily, quite a bit easier, rather. The uh, X-Acto knife that you see me using is actually almost a year old at this point. If you strap them often enough, you really don't need to change them unless you drop them and get them all uh, jacked up. So I'm picking out some hardware for my tray here and then laying out the pieces. I've got the front, the back, the two strap pieces, the hardware, and then the template that you see now. This template uh, was designed um, to be, in, or was inspired by the uh, symbol that Merida wears in the Disney movie Brave. So I've wet the leather a little bit and now I'm tracing that on there by just drawing with a pen. Um, experienced leather workers will know this really isn't the right way to tool leather. Generally you want to case the leather um, in its simplest form, that's just getting the leather a little bit wet until um, you're sure that you've got even saturation, letting it dry a bit, and then putting it in a sealed area, which pulls the, the moisture down through the leather, uh, giving you an equal distribution, which makes it um, cut more smoothly and then tool more smoothly. You don't have to wet it as re-wet it as often, but the, since this was a really quick project in terms of how long I was going to take to tool it, you know, this well, it really wasn't a problem. It, if it's something about this size, you really don't have to case it. You can, um, and you get a little bit better result, but for this, it worked out. So now I'm using my swivel knife with a ceramic blade to cut in the design. You, you definitely don't want to go too deep, but you don't want to go too light when you're using a swivel knife. If you cut in uh, enough, you should be able to do the tooling you're going to do without seeing the leather pull too much. Since I'm just going to be doing a pattern fill on these designs, um, I just did a real quick cut in, uh, and then I'm going to start with the tooling here shortly. So these are the tools that I'm using. Uh, if anybody needs the specific numbers, I can put those down in the show notes. Um, but really, just anything you've got that's a small backgrounder will work just fine. So on each one of these three shapes, I start by doing an outline around it. And you'll see here, now I'm going in and filling that in. I skipped some of that. Um, really, I think rather I lost some of that because my phone gets hot in the workshop and shuts off in the middle of recording, which is awesome. So now I'm going around and uh, beveling around the circle of the medallion. Uh, and, and then this shot, I'm using a uh, matting tool. Uh, my, probably my favorite leatherworking tool, and it puts this interesting uh, pattern along the outside edge. It just gives it a little more depth. Got my slot cutter and my strap end punch here. Go and work on the straps. You can't see a lot of this real well because um, I'm not real experienced with this and my shop has terrible lighting. So strap cutter I'm using, the, the end punch I'm using to give a nice aesthetic end to each of the pieces. And the other tool, the uh, slot punch, uh, gives a slot for the, the buckle to go through. Here I'm using uh, another one that I've already got made for another project to 
uh, get my positioning. Uh, and then a hole punch to put the places for the rivets, and then here for the uh, where the uh, tongue of the belt will go, tongue of the buckle. Again, I think my camera, my, my phone shut off and lost some of this information. Now it's time to die. So I use some, uh, some sheep wool I get at my uh, local leather store in their scrap bin, and I dye it with this. This color I'm using is ox blood. I'm not diluting it or anything. It's kind of going for a rustic look, so I just put it on heavy and kind of haphazardly. And because I put it on heavy, you'll see here that I run out of it. Um, thankfully, I got all the visible pieces done, so now I'm going to use um, some black antique dye um, on the back and on the thigh strap. Now I'm putting on a, a top coat. This is uh, Angelus brand uh, acrylic top coat. It's really meant for leather acrylic paints, but I feel like it does a way better job with less shine than some of the things that are de really designed to top coat the leather. Um, and then I, you'll saw I put, I put on some more black antique on this, and then wipe that off. Uh, now I'm going to put in the holes here. On, this is the piece that's going to um, keep the loop, or keep the thigh strap connected to the back of the quiver. So put a couple of holes here and then a couple of holes on the back panel of the quiver. The holes on the back panel of the quiver are a little closer together than the holes on that strap, which give it room for the strap to go through. Using some solid nickel, there are some solid uh, rivets here in nickel finish, and then here I'm putting on the contact cement on the front and back sides of the quiver. Contact cement's just going to hold things in place while I do the rest of the uh, work here. So because I cut these two pretty close, I didn't have to do much trimming. I think any trimming I did off camera. Um, once they're really close, then you can take them uh, you can sand the edges to, to make sure they're flush and you get a nice finish along the edge. So that's what I'm doing here. I've got a uh, sanding spindle that I got at Harbor Freight uh, mounted in my Harbor Freight drill press and I just do a couple of quick passes to even out both of those sides. Now I am taking an edge beveler to the front and back side of this to knock the corner off the, the leather so that when I go to burnish it, uh, it doesn't fold over or look funny in any other way. And then here you'll see this is the stitching groover. This is the line I'm going to follow with the stitching. Uh, checking that my boss stitcher is, is loaded properly. And now I'm going to get started sewing. This is a recent purchase I got, my boss sewing machine, and I love it to death. I've done a lot of hand stitching over the years, and I'm pretty much over it. This thing does a great job, um, and it was affordable. So, I know it looks like I'm cheering here, but really it's just that hand crank on the boss stitcher. So now I'm wetting the edges a little bit uh, to prepare for burnishing them. And you can see I've got the burnishing tool. And I'm just pressing down firmly as I run that tool along the edge, which gives a nice little polish um, to the edge. It kind of hides that seam in the leather. Later I go through and throw a little bit of that black dye on there, but I think that footage got lost. So here I am. I've got some uh, solid copper rivets. So you drive the plate down over those, then cut off the post, hammer it down. Use a ball peen hammer to get it started, and then I use the other end of that tool to give it a nice round feeling, and it, it takes away some of those edges. So I, I've used another portion of that larger strap to make uh, an area to connect that to the quiver and the, the ring. And here's the finished quiver.
This is going to a customer of mine who won a raffle on my Facebook page, or won a giveaway rather. Um, I'm really pleased with the results. Thanks for watching.